Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to make a diorama of the menu screen of one of my favorite video games ever, The Last of Us. A lot of you have commented on previous videos saying that they gave you Last of Us vibes, and since I really like the game as well, I thought I would make this one. It's going to be a pretty simple diorama, so I really focused on using a lot of different paint layers to add dimension on the walls, and to start off, I'm just gluing in this window frame and sealing some of the gaps with some putty. Then I took it outside and primed it with some spray primer, and turns out this was a really bad idea. Uh, for whatever reason, this color or this can of primer did not work well with all of my hobby paints. It just made everything kind of hydrophobic and all my paints scattered <laughs> instead of soaking in uh, like it should. But because I'm layering them and really they're old and worn anyway, it was fine. So I just started layering on tons of different colors and shades, most of them very watered down and using a sponge to stipple on with the texture. I would often follow that with some dabbing with a paper towel to soak up some of the extra as well. And that helped dig in some of the texture into the paint. My plan is this is only going to be an under layer of paint and so I'm making all these layers to make it look like it has dimension but once it's all dried I'm going to use this liquid latex again and then I'm going to paint a number of extra layers on top of it and once I'm satisfied with that I'll peel some of that away and so both the top layer and the bottom layer look like they have different dimensions to them. If you haven't heard yet, I recently started a Patreon and I started a website where I'm hosting some of my 3D model files for sale. If you've been enjoying these projects and would love to see even more of how I do them behind the scenes, going over to my Patreon would be a great place for that. There's also certain tiers for dedicated tutorials that I'm going to be doing each month and digital downloads so that you can even get some of the 3D model files each month for free and high resolution desktop photos of the finished projects. You can also direct message with me, so if you are working on any projects or have any questions, you can dialogue with me and I can help you out. Every little bit helps this channel as well, so the support so far has been amazing and it just allows me to do even more awesome projects in the future. And if you're more just interested in downloading some 3D models that you can use in your own projects or if you even want to follow along with one of mine, head over to my website and check out my 3D models. I'm going to be adding new models basically every time I post a video. The window in this video is already on there in a package of windows, and so you can download them immediately, 3D print them, and use them in your projects. So now I'm starting to peel back some of this paint. I've done it a little more minimal here than I have in previous dioramas because there wasn't that much paint cracking in the original game. And then I just added some brown pigment powder with a wet brush to dirty up some of the edges on this frame. Now I'm just priming the actual window part. For this one, instead of doing liquid latex for a peeling effect, I'm actually going to prime it, put this base color down, and then I'm going to use something called chipping fluid. I just spray a layer of chipping fluid with my airbrush. You can actually do a couple of coats of it. And then once that's dry, you put the final layer of paint. Then all you have to do is take a wet brush and you can start to chip away at the paint to reveal the paint underneath. It gives you a similar effect but much less surface texture and so it's good for smaller scale things. These are microscope slide covers. They're real glass so I can glue them on and I can break them and they really give a perfect broken glass window effect. Then I started gluing some vines in place and pulling some through the window so that they come in over the windowsill into the diorama. I added some dirt and dust on the floor and windowsill and then these little grass tufts in the corner. Now for the curtains. 
I added these two pieces of plastic and then added a metal rod to act as a curtain rod. To make the curtains themselves, I took a piece of fabric and I started to airbrush it so it looked a little more yellowed and dirty, and then tried a technique that I've never done before. There is a product that you can buy for this, and I did buy it, it just hasn't come yet, so I made my own out of some wood. I cut a bunch of these slits so that there are ridges in the wood, and after spraying some starch spray onto the fabric, I laid it out and started pushing it down into these ridges. I used these skewers to hold them in place and this card to help push it down, but it's basically making them into little pleated sections. Then I just ironed over it and let it dry and it held the shape very well. I will be talking about the actual product that's made for this on my Patreon this month and maybe even do this as a tutorial if you're interested. Then once I cut the curtain down to size I just used some hot glue to glue it to the curtain rod and I think it worked out pretty well. At least for my first time trying it. I brushed on a real small amount of brown pigment powder to dirty them a little bit more and then I painted the outside of the diorama black and it was time to film it. This is what my filming setup looked like. Aperture Lighting sent me their new Amaran 200D to try out on the channel and so that's the main light that's shining through the window right now. My usual problem is I don't have a powerful enough light and so this is actually a big step up from my other light that I have been using. So this is the scene with just the aperture light. This is a second aperture light for Phil. And then this is with my other light just shining on a white reflector in the background. So far the aperture light has been great, easy to use. I can dim it on here or on the app on my phone and it syncs perfectly with my other aperture light. You, as you can see here, I'm dimming it with my phone so I get the perfect ratio of fill light. Definitely let me know if you'd like to see more of how I light and film things in my dioramas, and I'll try to make a video that shows a lot more about it. And here's the final shot. If you caught that easter egg at the end let me know in the comments and hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you like the video big thanks to aperture for sending me their 200d they sent it to me for free and didn't require anything in return uh, so i just re have really enjoyed the light so far but i'll probably go more in depth of how i use it as i get used to it some more i do want to say thank you so much to my patrons again every little bit helps and if you are interested in getting any more behind the scenes content or video tutorials or any of the other things definitely check out my patreon and consider subscribing for as little as a cup of coffee a month also check out my website with my 3d models for sale you can download them instantly and 3d print them for your own projects i'll see you next time